So this channel is called Get Offset, but I have a second love in my heart. It's the Telecaster. I was really surprised when I sat down the other day and did the math and found out I have a lot more Telecasters than I thought I did. I actually had more Telecasters than Jazz Masters. I don't know how it happens. I swear these things just breed when you're not looking. But uh, yeah, let's go through all my Telecasters and let's make some hard decisions about which ones I should keep and which ones I should set free. Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily and I just love your smile. It's always great to see it. Let's start things off with my first Telecaster. Unlike my Jazz Masters, I don't really remember the order in which I got all of these Telecasters, but I do know that this was my very first. And Prince fans, you'll think you are uh, looking at something especially cool, and you kind of are. This is the HSN, just kidding. This is the Harley Benton copy of a Mad Cat. I forget what the exact model name is, but there's a full demo of this, and probably most of the guitars I'm gonna talk about today on the channel. This one I did pretty early on, but uh, this, yeah, this is basically a copy of the guitar that Prince made famous. Prince played a Honer Mad Cat, which was a rebranded H.S. Anderson. Those things now sell for thousands and thousands of dollars. This one was, I believe, 185 shipped when I got it. It has, I believe that's an ash body. It sure looks like it and a maple veneer. This, of all of the, the Mad Cat copies I've seen, this one, I think, for the most part, had the best bones. So the pick guard on the website was completely wrong, so I changed it. This is from Scratch It. That's one of the most qu asked questions I get on that video uh, by people who don't read the answers in the comments. But uh, Scratch It made these plates for me. Um, the big thing I feel like people get wrong in a lot of these Mad Cat copies is one, the pit guard, because it's really hard to find that material these days, but that stripe down the middle, I feel like people often make it a little too wide. I know Eastwood has a pretty good copy of this. However, their pit guard is still wrong, and for the price of that is, I don't feel like buying a replacement guard for it. One cool thing that I like, someone on eBay at the time was selling these water slide decals and they say H. Benton, like in that Honer font and uh, the Mad Cat. So I'm not pretending it isn't what it is, but it is a nice little nod. Uh, the big downside of this guitar is very, very heavy, but I like the, the tuners are really responsive. The hardware is generally good. The electronics are, you know, they're Wilkinson pickups and they're just, they're not that bad. So enough talking, let's go ahead and uh, hear this guitar. That's in the middle position. These are not especially powerful pickups. Some of my other tellies have way more powerful pickups, um, but they, they sound pretty nice and they get the job done. That's the bridge and here's the neck. Big volume difference there. I could obviously raise this bridge pickup. It could stand to be raised. That being said, I don't play this a lot. I do really like it though. I love the feel of the neck. It's a nice satin finish. It's a thicker neck than I'm used to, um, probably closer to like a D profile, but that doesn't really bother me at all. Probably could use a bit of intonation as well, but. Yeah, but I love this guitar. It's fun. This is the first guitar I ever did any work on really at all. It wasn't even a lot. The big thing was I took off the neck. I sanded down the face of the um, headstock here for the water slide decal. Um, and I had to stain it to match, which was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. 
This is obviously a little bit on the dusty side. For the most part, this just hangs on a wall. It looks real pretty. Uh, it's not my best Telecaster. Uh, I did put some work into it though, and I'm really proud of it. And I can only imagine getting rid of this by maybe giving it to somebody in the event I get a nicer build or a, an actual HS Anderson or something like that. So all that being said, let's go to the next guitar. Okay, again, I don't really remember what my second Telecaster is, but I think it might be this one. Uh, this is a Ventera Road Worn Telecaster Deluxe. I had never gotten a Road Worn guitar before, but I really do like it. I'm pretty sure I have a video of this on uh, YouTube somewhere, but... Uh, <laughs> I listen, I never played this, I've never gigged with this guitar. I never even took the, the sticky off of the sticker there. Uh, it's not because I don't like the guitar, but I feel like maybe I realize that humbuckers aren't necessarily for me. Um, but the good things about this guitar, the neck, like it's, it's kind of a satin finish, probably more akin to like a road worn or worn finish, uh, making it very comfortable and fast. Uh, so I really liked that about it. I love the look of this guitar. I think the checking is really, really tasty. There are, like, whenever they have the the wearing right there, I don't find it particularly convincing. And I really doubt you'll be able to see, but there are some weird, like, dings there. I don't know what those are supposed to really indicate or mimic, uh, but I do think it's a little, a little silly. Like, are you just jamming the strings? And, and they're wrong, but yeah, it has a little fake buckle rash. It's a really nice, handsome guitar. Uh, and I have had a lot of fun over the years playing it, mostly on the sofa. But let's go ahead and hear this in the middle position. Wow, that's not in tune at all. So it does kind of mimic that that twang. I mean, it's a quacky-ish bridge, but. There's something about it that I just don't really love tonally. you have the, when you're playing those lower strings uh, on that bridge uh, pickup and that might be why I don't play it very much what do you think do you like these pickups Yeah, ultimately this guitar, though I, I really do like it and I, I just don't think this is for me. I've had it for years and I get the most joy out of this guitar when I'm just kind of playing it unplugged on the sofa at the end of the night while I'm watching TV with my husband or something. <laughs> I feel like this one could benefit greatly from a pickup swap. And frankly, the, the fret edges are a little bit sharp. I am usually pretty lax on, on that kind of thing. Uh, in general, just personally for a guitar that I'm playing. Um, but it is winter and it's a little bit dry, but this is a lot worse in terms of fret edges than most of the guitars I've been playing. But other than that, it's very comfortable. I just maybe am not into these particular pickups. So that being said, the Road Worn Ventera is probably one that I will look to move relatively shortly. So yeah, let's, let's go to another guitar. This is the Chrissy Hind Signature Telecaster that Fender released a few years ago. It uh, even has a special Chrissy Hind CH backplate. 
It's not like the autograph on the headstock like some signature models. So that's nice and subtle. This is also a road worn guitar, or should I say relic guitar. Uh, there's some relicking, some, some ding-ish things right there. There's really beautiful checking all over this instrument. There's a good shot of it. Locking tuner is pretty nice. Uh, as for the neck, that has always been my problem with this guitar, uh, both in terms of just the back feel. It has a glossy finish, and when the rest of the guitar is relict, I really don't want a high gloss finish on the neck either. I think that's kind of weird. Um, and frankly, there's something that's always kind of sticky-ish about this neck. Um, I don't know if it hadn't cured long enough or something. I don't feel that problem with it right now. Uh, that being said, if I did keep this guitar, I might look into get changing the neck altogether because uh, the radius. I believe it's a seven and a half inch radius on this, which makes sense because Chrissy is a rhythm player. Uh, that being said, I play a mix of rhythm and lead in pretty much every project I play in. Uh, so it's not a big deal, but it is just a feel I'm not used to. That being said, if I want to do like chunky bar chords up on the neck, that's this is pretty unbeatable for that. Um, what else do I want to say about this guitar? I really love the, the bridge pickup. There's something unique about it. It doesn't have flat pole pieces. Oh yeah, I should probably play in the middle position if I haven't already. Yeah, it's just kind of weird playing a neck this round. I'm really used to at least having nine and a half um, inch radius, which it doesn't seem like it should be a big difference, but it really makes one uh, in the long term. Yeah, if you're playing bar chords up and down the neck, this is a great guitar and it's a great neck uh, and profile for that. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this about two guitars in a row. I think I, I might move this one. Honestly, I just don't play it very much. Um, I really struggle to say that. I think it's such a cool guitar. Love Chrissy a lot. Uh, I think this guitar did her swell. I, I don't know, if I, if I found myself playing more gigs where I was a rhythm guitarist, where I was just playing bar, playing a lot of bar chords up and down the neck, this would be a great guitar for that. And I really love that bridge pickup. I always have. Um, so I, I'm considering moving this one. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Uh, but it's a very cool guitar. Um, was really stoked to be on a demo for this one. And um, yeah. <laughs> It, has a, it came with a really nice case. I really love the case for this Telecaster as well. It also came with a sheriff's badge, which was cute. I know that Chrissy wears one. Um, but the strap, it was a vegan, a vegan guitar strap, and it just uh, was, it started shedding really nasty little particles all over the case and all over my house. So I got rid of that strap pretty quickly. So I feel like that was not a win. But overall, this is a really, really cool guitar. Anyone would be lucky to have their hands on one. I, I didn't mention that it has a six saddle bridge instead of the traditional Telecaster three. The previous guitar had a more um, modern uh, style bridge. But yeah, the, the fretwork on this, I always felt like was, was pretty good. I never had complaints about that. It was just for me, the, the radius and the, the, the glossy neck, uh, I just didn't bond with as well. So all that being said, let's move on to the next one. 
All right. This is one I was on the launch for. It is the Player Plus Nashville Telecaster. Um, and I love a Nashville Telecaster. These were created to give those Nashville studio musicians a little bit more versatility by including that middle pickup, which I will play. But this, this Nashville Tele is really cool in that, well, one, it has a five-way switch because it's, you know, strat style setup but if you pull out the tone knob it activates the neck pickup in the one and two positions so you can get that traditional telly sound uh, or you can have all three pickups running at once which is pretty pretty cool the uh <laughs> the tuners are locking has locking tuners and the neck is a really really nice satin finish this color is i believe aged fiesta red which is really cool uh, the fretwork on it is fine, but the edges are nice and buttery smooth. So here's what this pickup sounds like with the um, neck and bridge pickup only. <laughs> And let's hear the bridge pick up by itself. So when I was uh, playing through all these guitars, I decided to try to tune them and make sure they were all working before I filmed this video. Uh, the neck pickup on this was uh, lethargic and these are noiseless uh tele pickups i f i find them generally fine they might lack a little bit of that top end um but to have a noiseless setup i think is really really great pickups are swappable but yeah so then the bridge pickup i should say wasn't working it was kind of outputting a little bit of of sound but not nearly what it was supposed to and when i measured it when it was plugged in it was coming at like 0.8 which is you should be this should be measuring more like 13 um and that's in uh, milli ohms or something um you're gonna get me for that one so i opened it up i took this plate off and i found that the 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 uh, i believe it was the neck and the bridge pickups were not actually soldered into the switch and i did take a little video of that i'm going to put it on social if i haven't already but uh that'll that that'll do it so i thought so i soldered it all together and it didn't work still <laughs> uh so i talked to my friend sean at gun street wiring i sent him some pictures and he said if the pickup is measuring correctly if you know it's not a grounding issue which i knew um or like something touching the shielding then uh you might try to bend something in the switch he basically said this kind of switch oh my goodness the, the knob just fell off the, the top of the knob just fell off uh this kind of switch is is prone to being bent out of shape uh, i think that's not so uncommon with with these kinds of switches um but yeah maybe i should have left it in the the middle position which i don't use very much but yeah let me go ahead and run through all five positions with and without the the tone knob being pulled so this is a bridge oh <laughs> turn it up again by the way now the bridge's output is extremely extremely hot <laughs> back to the one with the tone knob engaged. Pretty interesting and unique sound. I still really like this guitar. I thought it might be on the chopping block. Um, but I feel like I should keep at least one real standard Telecaster. So that being said, for now, in my mind, I, I think I'm going to keep this one. Uh, I, I, I think it's a great player. I am still aghast that I opened it up and two of the connection points in it were not soldered. And no, I have actually done not done any work on this guitar. It behooves me to keep a lot of guitars uh, stock, especially ones that people might buy 
without having the attention to modify them. So most of my, my fenders are pretty much as, as they were, uh, maybe a couple of pickup swaps in there, but this was not one of them. So yeah, that came off the line with two things not swatter, soldered in the switch. Um, I've actually gigged with this guitar and I would have been really, really upset if uh, I had had a failure mid gig uh, having to then had to rely on these other positions just to find that <laughs> it was never soldered. I got to also find something to make this tip stay in. I feel like maybe it's just the wrong one, but also maybe that could have had something to do with the, I wonder if that had something to do with the, the switch failing because I do have to kind of push that back on and I don't know why that would cause added stress, but maybe it did. That being said, keeping this in that middle position now, let's go to the next guitar. All right, well, this is a baritone Telecaster. <laughs> let's get away from normalcy for a minute. Uh, this is a Paranormal Series Baritone Telecaster. I didn't get one in the first run. I managed to get one in the second run of Baritone Tellies that they did. It has a glossy neck, which I actually don't mind this glossy at all. It has these two P90-esque pickups. I'm just going to go ahead and call them P90s. Um, the big problem with this guitar when it shipped was the output jack was would kind of come out of the guitar. Even mine did that a little bit, which I didn't even notice until someone asked me, is yours having this issue? And I tried it. I wiggled it around like, sure, sure, surely it did. Uh, so I put in an electro socket instead. Uh, people make fun of that video a lot because my hands were apparently kind of shaky in it, but whatever. <laughs> I haven't gigged with a baritone. Um, in a while, I do usually at least once or twice a year. There had been a woman I was performing with a lot where I would just use baritone. So I was playing, I was getting a lot of use out of this. Um, and I've used it in some country music gigs as well. Unfortunately, I, I haven't, didn't take the time to relearn any of the songs I've traditionally played baritone in. So let's just go ahead and uh, give it a strum on the middle position. It's tuned with a low B. Isn't, isn't that just beautiful? Baritones are a mood. Uh, the, the gig I was playing where I was using them a lot was a country gig and there were a few Nico K songs. So I had reason to use baritone in that. Again, it's just been like a year and a half since I've played those songs. So I just don't really remember them, but. I know a lot of people play the Twin Peaks theme on the baritone, but I just play mine on a regular guitar. So uh, yeah, I don't have a lot to play on this. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I can tell you I'm not getting rid of my only baritone guitar. They are a ton of fun. They're a great way to add depth in recording. I feel like it might've been Mason Stoops or somebody who said that um, when someone tells them they want a song, but they don't want it to be a guitar song, he'll throw in a baritone guitar and they'll be really happy. And I definitely believe that. <laughs> it's cool, it's moody. Live in La Vida Loca. Let's go to the next guitar. <laughs> From baritone guitar to tenor guitar. This is the uh, Telly Tenor, Tenor Telly. Fender did the, a, a short run of these and I'd always hoped they would make more. Apparently they, they, these weren't, uh, they, these didn't prove easy to make, I should say. So they had, uh, they didn't make as many as they expected. So I actually, I had to buy this one and I paid more for it than I would have liked to, but I really love tenor guitars and I love Telecasters and uh, this makes me very happy. <laughs> it's a little guitar. Uh, a big problem with a lot of tenor guitars that you'll buy even from people who purport to just make tenor guitars uh, is that sometimes the bridge spacing is more like a bass spacing and if you're playing 
And especially like, in my opinion, in like a mandolin tuning that's in fifths, which is very common for tenors, I feel like it's really hard to bar, like make the mandolin chords, especially the bar chords, when uh, the string spacing is so wide. So that's a big beef that I personally have, uh, mainly with the Eastwood tenors they've been making lately. Um, ever since they stopped making the Astro Jet, I've been a little bit sad. That being said, this is tuned like the top uh, four strings of a guitar. <laughs> So I can do a little Nico case. Who is the, the reason I started looking into tenor guitars? I knew that she played them, but the more I played them, the more I realized these are little funk machines, man. Because a lot of times in funk and disco and that kind of thing, you won't see guitars really using those, those bottom strings as much. So it's just kind of like, how, how does that go? So that was a little Lizzo, and I couldn't play that twice if I wanted to. There's also, give me a thinner pick here. So, <laughs> I actually played a tenor guitar, albeit not this one, at a disco gig I did, a uh, tribute to the women of disco. There's a lot you can do on this. It's just a fun little tinkerer for me. I don't really ever play a tenor guitar out, except for that disco gig, which made it really fun. Um, I really enjoy this guitar. Fender did a lot with it. They have actual uh, correct spacing on the pole pieces on these guitars. I apologize for the, uh, the dust, but these were really highly sought after. Um, a, Apparently somebody was trying to sell like all of them on Reverb for like $5,000, which I found to be rude. probably use the setup a little bit of intonation. This guitar is t too much fun. I spent too much time trying to get it. Uh, I thank you to the person who sold it to me. He probably could have gotten more for it. Uh, that being said, I guess I had been playing. What had I been playing? Oh, the nine chord. Let's hear it in the bridge position, which is where I've been playing. And the neck. You know, there is hum there. I don't think these are reverse wound. That's my one dig on this guitar. I wish they would have reverse wound the pickups. It doesn't seem to be the case, at, at least. That neck sounds nice and full. The bridge is twangy. What else could you ask for in a tenor Telecaster, a Teletenor? <laughs> All right, let's let's go to the next guitar. You're never gonna guess what this is, guys. It's another Tele Tenor. Uh, this one was was homemade. I think the person who builds these is in the Pacific Northwest. I bought this from uh, a Tenor Aficionado in a Costco parking lot. Uh, you can't. You, you probably will never guess why I bought this. <laughs> It's a little itty bitty mad cat. That being said, I had my friend Jason make the the pick guard for it, uh, which I really appreciate. It already had that stripe. Uh, whoever built this obviously made some choices that they regretted and never filled a couple holes there. My, my guess is they, they misdrilled the bridge. There's also a little dot right there that I can't imagine that they, they meant for that to be like that. Um, the, the, I don't know what the pickup is. I've actually not opened this up. There's a switch here, but I don't know if it does anything. So also this is, uh, I wanted to tune this to fifths, but, um, the strings, I couldn't get it there. There was too much tension. So this is tuned, uh, like Keith. So. be something tonally happening with that uh that that toggle but this is just a little power chord machine you know
You know, it is it is certainly uh, an interesting guitar. I'm going to get different string gauges on on this thing. Um, this body is I don't know what the wood material is, but again, like the the Mad Cat that Harley Benton, this does seem to have a maple veneer. I'm I'm pretty sh uh, maybe I don't know. It's an interesting little guy. I, I am like, I am very confident I could never sell this if I wanted to. The neck is interesting. It's nice and fat. It feels really, really, really good. Uh, this is a killer little, little dude. I probably should have paid a little bit less for it. I don't really remember what I paid for it, but I wanted it. I've been, I've been looking at this guitar on reverb for years before I realized he was in the Pacific Northwest, the seller. So I've seen, I've seen similar ones at local stores, like the trading musician. This cutout is somebody's somebody's handiwork uh so if you made this and you're watching this let me know i would uh love to get a rundown it's a nice little guy and i'm a i'm a fan so i think i only have one more no i have two more let's get to the ps de resistance my favorite telecaster <laughs> well here it is this is by far my favorite telecaster in the same vein that if i could only have one jazz master it'd be my elvis costello signature jazz master if i could only have one t-style guitar it would definitely be this this uh like i said g and l not the original paint job because when i bought this at carter vintage in nashville tennessee and i think 2021 uh, it had the most horrific uh gatlinburg fever dream <laughs> airbrushed artwork on it basically it was uh, i'm not going to mince words here it was like the trucker flap ladies like so the naked ladies kind of laying back on uh, as clouds, the women were clouds, but there was lightning uh, coming out of their assholes. And as I always say, like who amongst us has not been in that same predicament? However, did not want it emblazoned on a guitar I was playing. So Philippe from Caroline Guitar Company and I had these refinished by B.A. Ferguson at the same time. We called them the Golden Girls, our G&Ls. And uh, this is an interesting guitar because it has a B bender, which is why I'm playing it with a strap on. So. <laughs> So that's not all it has. It also has a drop D hip shot thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this guitar is weird. It sounds good. When I plugged it in a Carter Vintage, I sent up a prayer that it didn't sound good, but it sounds really, really good. So uh, let's hear it in the middle position. Flats are, these frets are flat as a pancake. Uh, it could really, really use a refret. It could frankly use a little bit of work, but I adore this guitar. I play it more than nearly any other guitar I have, period. Uh, the only guitar I'm playing more than this right now is probably the Ventera 2 Jazzmaster, but I have gigged with this. I love this. <laughs> pickups sound amazing. I love this uh, bridge pickup especially. It is it, it is twang man. But uh, my favorite thing about this guitar is it's Parsons style B bender. I've always wanted one. Uh, by the way, shout out again to Jason for cutting this pick guard as well. Um, I've always wanted one. They are expensive. The fact that this had been sitting at Carter Vintage for a few years, probably because of the artwork, uh, helped me a lot, making this relatively affordable, but I am definitely on a mission to get my money's worth out of this guitar. What I've learned lately is that beat benders are a little bit controversial. Uh, people don't really understand the concept of bending one string. Those people obviously don't listen to a ton of country music. Um, I'm not the best beat bender player in the world, but I've gigged at, with uh, some country bands and had some country gigs uh, with this guitar and it was a huge help. Um, it allowed me to add some kind of ambiance like you just heard with the, the bending of the 
things like that are really difficult to do. Getting little swells in here. Oh, that's not a good example. But um, it's, it's hard to, to do sitting down, but believe me when I say this with a volume pedal swelling into some bends, adds really nice ambiance to songs. It has really come in handy on a lot of gigs. Ultimately, my goal is to have Nicola Lozenak out of Vancouver, BC build me something kind of similar to this, another Telecaster, her style Telecaster, with a B-Bender in it as well. So that's what I'm hoping to do. You know, just like the Jazzmaster video, send a few out back into the world and uh, get something more bespoke for me. So that being said, let's uh, move on from my golden girl, my golden child, the cream of the crop to my newest Telecaster. When I posted on threads that I had uh, eight guitars, obviously this video has more, uh, someone said if one of those isn't a thin line, uh, you're, you're going to be in trouble, Missy, or something like that. Uh, this is not quite a thin line, but this is an Amazon guitar. I got this guitar on Amazon from a company called Gear It, as shown on the headstock, and it was under $200. It came with a gig bag and some other stuff. They didn't pay me to make this video. Uh, they did pay me to make an Instagram reel about it, but frankly, like the fretwork is really shockingly nice. <laughs> like the, the fret edges are perfectly smooth, which I wasn't expecting. The neck is kind of like a semi-gloss, uh, so it's not very sticky. It has binding all around, which is really surprising to see. I think the burst is nice. This is just a gen generally nice looking guitar. There are a few fit and finish things that I, I have beef with. There doesn't seem to be any finish on the bottom of the neck there, which is strange. And I really wish there was finish or binding or something in that F hole cut because it just kind of looks like raw particle board but it's lightweight, it's affordable. I would recommend this to people who have like maybe kids. In fact, I am giving this guitar to a kid. I'm giving it to my friend's son uh, because he's just started playing and uh, mama wants her guitars back. <laughs> so we have a P90 in the neck, a humbucker in the bridge and that humbucker. Is splittable, which I think is really, really cool. to say about this guitar i mean it's an am it's like it's 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 a basic guitar two hundred dollars but again you do get a gig bag you get a tuner i think you get a capo and some picks and stuff too a cable with it even it this will scratch scratch an itch for somebody who wants a guitar that being said it's not i don't think the bridge sounds really like a tele bridge at all i think all of the goodness in this guitar really is in that neck hum uh, p90 that neck p90 uh i think the p90 actually sounds really really good considering how much this guitar costs again my only beef with it is some fit and finish stuff and frankly i probably replace the bridge sometimes there's a little wiggle on that high e string and i don't really love that um but again, yeah, this guitar, it's not bad. And it is going to immediately leave my life. Uh, no shade to it. I obviously think it's good enough to give a good friend, uh, give to a good friend for a good cause. I wouldn't give my friends trash. So <laughs> let's talk about the guitars we, we've covered today. There have been nine of them, including two tenor guitars. And I know it seems obscene that I would keep both of the tenor guitars, but I am. Tenor guitars especially, I think you can have more than one of them because you can tune them to such different things. The one that looks more like Prince's guitar, the handmade one, I am going to get the right string gauges to tune that into fifths so I can have some, some fun there a la Warren Ellis. Um, the Chrissy Hind, I just can't justify keeping that. Uh, the, the Ventera Deluxe, I can't justify keeping that. 
And I am increasingly on the fence about the Player Plus Telecaster. I really thought I was going to get rid of that. Now I just don't think that I am. Uh, playing it again today and fixing it up, I really like that guitar. I would struggle to get rid of it. And it is different enough, in my opinion, from the GNL to justify keeping both. The GNL is a perfect T-style guitar, in, in my opinion. Those frets are flat as hell, so I do think I need to take that somewhere and get a refret on it. Maybe a nice little setup, give it some love. It deserves it. Um, and the baritone I'm keeping because you need one baritone. Honestly, I, I feel like my Telecasters varied more um, in terms of like just they were so different compared to my Jazz Masters. I had a lot more overlap with the Jazz Masters probably because I just love Jazz Masters. But with the Telecasters, what I see is it wasn't just about it being a Telecaster, it was about it having its own unique thing. The Nashville style Telecaster can really scratch the itch of both a Telecaster and a Stratocaster in its own way, especially if you swap out that neck pickup for something like a Lawler Royal T, which uh, I probably won't do. I think I'm gonna give that to Nicole for that build. Um, the the B-Bender Tele obviously has a B-Bender and the drop D thing. Um, I use that a lot more than I ever thought I would. There's, if you're interested in getting into B-Bender stuff, the B-Bender Bunker is a great YouTube channel for tutorials. Huge fan of that guy's stuff. Um, what else? The Chrissy, I just, I never bonded with it. Like I really wish that I had as much as I'd love Chrissy Hind, um, Ohio represent. Uh, I can't justify keeping that guitar though. I really love that bridge pickup. It's hard. So, you know, let me know in the comments, which do you think I could probably do without? Don't ask me to give you a guitar. I'm already giving one away. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, have I, am I making some right choices? Um, am I being, am I not, Am I not getting rid of enough? Uh, probably not, but it's it's my house and I have to live with the ramifications of my collection. But to everybody out there, thanks for watching. Uh, my favorite way to support the channel is to like, comment, and subscribe. But if you're looking to buy musical instruments or other AV stuff, please consider using the affiliate links in the video description. I'm especially fond of that Sweetwater link. And if you're interested in any of these guitars, I do have an email address in my about section. Um, I may be swayed on some that I'm kind of on the fence about, so it's worth a shot, I guess. <laughs> um, what else? We have merch at getoffsetpodcast.com slash shop. Uh, I'm on threads. That's a fun place. Love these guitars. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll put an affiliate link for for this guitar, uh, for the Amazon, um, the Amazon affiliate link for this Garrett guitar. Uh, it's, I, I do think it's worth $200. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, let's, I, I don't know if I'm missing anything, but, Thank you for bringing that smile into my world again today. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was a long one and let's just uh let's just end it. Until next time, my name is Emily.